Cambridge uh, is a chemical similarity enrichment analysis um, method for metabolomics. It's a new enrichment analysis approach. My name is Dinesh Kumar Barupa. I'm a project scientist at the NIH West Coast Metabolomics Center at the University of California, Davis. If you have any question regarding the approach, you can email me at dinkumar at ucdavis.edu. Metabolomics data has become a commodity these days. Anyone can purchase these data sets from service centers in public and private sectors. For example, at WCMC at UC Davis, data sets having up to 800 known metabolites can be purchased for $280 per sample. To generate these data sets, each sample is analyzed with four assays. Um, using LC and GCMS, covering complex lipids, biogenic amines, primary metabolites, oxalipin, steroids, and bile acids. Altogether, these 800 compounds can cover almost 80 chemical classes. And if we look at overlap, uh, so they complement each other. Uh, the largest overlap was seen between uh, two lipidomics, protform positive and negative ESI modes, because uh, there are several lipids that can ionize uh, in both mode and give signals in both modes. So <clears throat> the cost for such analysis is $280 per sample and turnaround time is 100 days. Uh, users and clients can get raw LCG CMS data files uh, plus uh, quality control reports plus 5,000 high quality unknown metabolites these are high quality unknowns because they have they are not just ions or features they are computationally validated to be true peaks having uh, isotope patterns and addict information um, for them so altogether uh, <coughs> If you're starting a new metabolomics project, uh, it's better to contact the service center and ask for um, the current status of the quality of data and any publicly available data sets from these centers that can be they can give you some idea that what kind of metabolites uh, you may be detecting, you may be seeing in the data matrices. There are several papers out there which have high quality metabolomics data sets available for download in their supplementary sections. I listed out some of them here. Uh, as you can see, the number of known metabolites in these papers is almost 800. This uh, count of known metabolites has been increasing over the past couple of years. Um, because of the expansion of uh, in silico mass spectra libraries and also expansion of uh, mass spectra li library for pure standards. And this number will grow uh, as we developing better algorithms to predict spectra from structures and uh, uh, stru uh, structures from spectra. In addition to, to the high quality metabolomics data sets, um, several papers also have uh, tables having metabolites and um, effect sizes and significances uh, coming out of a statistical analysis. These two information, uh, high quality metabolomics data set and uh, st statistical analysis are available in the supplementary sections of uh, several papers. Uh, which provide, uh, give an idea that um, data sets are readily available and uh, quality is improving and statistical analysis is straightforward um, to conduct for these data sets. However, the challenge remain uh, that how do we interpret these high quality metabolomics data sets? One of the approaches uh, to interpret metabolomics data sets is enrichment analysis. The basic idea is explained in this picture that we have a population of black and white balls uh, represented by this bowl where we have seven black and eight white balls here. So that's the population. We take a random sample of six balls uh, in this cup 
and then we ask a question that what is the probability of getting four or more black balls in the cup and that will tell us if black balls are overrepresented in our sample it's a very hard area of research for building new bioinformatics softwares for metabolomics and there's a tons of opportunities for development in the field of metabolomics for new enrichment anal uh, analysis approaches there's, there are already 50,000 and more papers reporting use of enrichment or overrepresentation for lists of genes, transcripts, proteins, and metabolites. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about the ma mathematical concepts of um, overrepresentation analysis, that how the probabilities are calculated, you can go to this website and they have um, some excellent material. The picture was actually adopted from uh, this website as well. Biological pathways are often used for enrichment analysis. For a list of pathway maps, p-values are calculated using a statistical test known as a hypergeometric test. To compute this test, we need four input values. Number one is size of a background database. Second is a list um, count of all the compounds in a pathway map. Third is um, K, which is a count of all the altered compound in a statistical analysis on a p-value cutoff, for example, 0 0.05 which is most often used cutoff to generate list of altered compound. And then we need a value M, which is an overlap between K and L. And then <coughs> you can relate this to the previous simple example that the bowel, bowel represent N, black balls represent pathway, and cup represent K, and M represent uh, the uh, four balls that were found among K and using a simple formula uh, using a simple function in R P hyper um, we can calculate P value for a pathway and you repeat, repeat this test for all the pathway in the pathway list here, um, metabolon list, which is one of the most um, utilized software for pathway enrichment analysis using a hypergeometric test. It uses a size of background database with almost 16, 1600 compounds with pathway annotation. So output of such analysis is a table and a visual representation. The table includes pathway name, and total number of compounds in that pathway, how many hits we have, and then a p-value, and neg negative log of that p-value, and the corrections for multiple hypothesis testing. And after that, there is an impact which is calculated using topology of a pathway. The visual uh, representation, A is a pathway impact plot, where x-axis is the pathway impact score and y-axis is the negative log of a p-value. Uh, negative log is used because um, most or more uh, significantly affected pathways are shown at the top of the plot. And uh, impact score is calculated using a topology uh, as a pathway is given a higher impact score if um, the compound, the found altered compound, are um, located in the central um, region of a pathway map. It's based on the centrality of the pathway. And so that's why um, on, uh, the pathway map centrality may show um, the importance of that compound. So this approach uh, is used by metabolist and in several publications we have uh, seen use of this approach.
so question is uh, why we need another enrichment analysis approach it seems to be working easy to use and uh, what are the limitations of such an approach